Hello, YouTube. How are you? Welcome to another DIY stitch marker event make along. I keep wanting to call it like mystery make along because I'm so used to doing those. Um, so it's another DIY stitch marker event. We are on day 12. This is the final day. We're wrapping it up with something very cool. Um, something I, I literally have no knowledge about whatsoever. And so, I mean, I can hear you guys right now. What's new, Marley? Um, so <laughs> that's where I am right now. We have Caitlin here to talk to us about the Silhouette 3D um, printer. And we're going to use that up today. And so I'm going to let Caitlin take it away. I'm going to put a link in the description description box below to the blog post for everything that you need uh, for the entire Stitch Along event. You can find out information or get links to each one of the days. So you can pick whatever day you want to look at and get that information. And I think a lot of people are like in the resin days. Um, that seems to be the most popular that I'm seeing online. So we'll see. Um, all right. So Caitlin, go ahead and let them know what they need to know. Yay, we are here. We made it 12 days, guys. 12 different stitch markers. We're here at the end. It's a happy and sad day all at once. <laughs> but that doesn't mean the fun has to stop once we get past this. This is just your first 12 of hopefully many more stitch markers that we can share with you. Um, so before we get started, while Marley is sharing everywhere, putting things in the comments, don't forget to go down to the comment section below and leave a comment if you've been enjoying this. Um, if you wanna see it happen again next year or a different time of year, maybe again this year. Um, and potentially if you wanna purchase a kit to be able to have the supplies. Um, we might not be able to do all of the supplies. Like if we were doing this set of 12 days, we're probably not going to include this machine, um, but we could do a lot of the supplies that we would need, or you know, we could reconfigure it that one specific set of stitch markers would be all included. So let us know what you're thinking and we can go from there. And today we're going to talk about the Silhouette 3D uh, printing machine, which is called the Silhouette Alta. Um, so you might have heard of a Cameo, you might have heard of a Cricut, um, those are all paper cutting machines and Silhouette is one of those brands and they have a 3D printer. And so we're going to play around with it and see how you can make your own stitch markers from it. And the Silhouette Al Alta is a really great option for a 3D printer because it's not super expensive. And I understand that's all relative, um, but right now you can get the Alta machine for $199. Um, and that's pretty reasonable compared to some of the other 3D printer machines. So it may be quite expensive for you and your budget, but in comparison to other 3D printers, this is a reasonable option if you want to get into it. Um, it is a craft printer. So it's not made for like mass production or anything like that. It is made for at home doing projects like this. Um, so you can go ahead and you can make stitch markers with it. Uh, you can make vases, you can make um, all kinds of different things with it. And you can even make little boxes. And so I made this little kitty box, which you can see there's some cool decoration on here. And this is all files that you can get with your printer. And then you can make your own little dishes too to keep your stitch markers and other things in depending on how large you make it. Um, we're not gonna show this today because this one takes a, like an hour and a half to get both pieces done. So we're not gonna make you sit here, but this is an example of something else you can do. So you can do like 3D full structures. And I mean, it's really hard plastic that it ends up being. Um, okay, so before we get started, let's just run over stitch marker lingo one more time. Um, so when you have your stitch marker, you can put a jump ring on the top, which is what we've been doing all week or past 12 days. Um, and that's great for knitting. And you would slip it right onto your knitting needles while you're working. But you can also make stitch markers for crochet. Um, so typically, they're called like a locking stitch marker. And you could do something like this, which is a lobster claw. And you just pull the hinge back and you can slide this right on your stitches. And there's multiple sizes of this. So you can change it up depending on what yarn you're working with. 
or you could look at something like a hinged ear wire uh, that opens up with the hinge. You would slip this onto your stitches, or when it's closed, it does have a nice large hole that you can slip it on to your knitting needle. Is that a fish? They are fish. <laughs> and they're in my cat box. Oh, how cute is that? That is adorable. <laughs> I thought it was cute. That is so cute. <laughs> cool. So, I mean, this is, this is so like, like I literally know nothing. So like, to me, it would be like, you know, Michelangelo gets his block of what? I, I, marble. That's the word I'm looking for, you know, and like starts chiseling the marble. Is that not the case here? Like, how does this work? No. no. Um, so what I just don't get it. Yeah, so what this is, is you can make three-dimensional shapes just like this, and it's using something called a PLA filament. And I'm gonna, it's attached to my machine. Um, but so it's this coil of plastic that you run through your machine and it heats it up and it actually lays layers upon layers upon layers um, to be able to make whatever 3D object that you're doing. And like, I don't know if you can see this. Yeah. Maybe, but you can see how like this is not, so there's different, there's three different um, settings, I guess you would call it that you can do. And you can do like a draft, which is like really quick, get it done. This is called a standard. Um, so it's a little bit more detailed in what you're doing, but there is a third one. I forget what it's called right now. I'm called, mm -hmm, whatever, I will figure it out in a second. But um, it'll give you a little bit more of a smooth finish to it. So you don't necessarily see the layers. I mean, in this case, the layers look cool because it makes it look like a shell. Um, but in other cases, you don't want it. Here is an anchor. I don't know how well you can see that one, but that one has less of the layered look to it just because of the design element of it. You can also go back and take um, sandpaper to this lightly to try to buff it out a little bit if you want to. Uh, I don't think that you can, you can paint this like with acrylic paint, um, but without like a sealer to it, it's going to kind of chip off. And although this is white filament, you can get a ton of of different colors. Um, there are different types of filaments. So you just wanna check with whatever machine you're getting. It comes with like a number after the filament and you wanna make sure you have the right number because that um, corresponds to how hot your machine can get. So just pay attention to whatever your machine directions tell you to do or just purchase like Silhouette has their own brand of filament. So if you purchase that, you know you're safe. But if you wanna purchase like online or like, I know Joann's has a couple machines too. Um, they have a Polaroid and I forget what the other one's called. So they sell filament that will work in this machine. So just double check, it's the right number. Um, so interesting. What? This is so interesting. Yeah, and the cool thing about this machine is it does have quite a large area to print on. Again, it's a craft printer. So it's not going to be as big of a space as some of the more industrial uh, printers. But compared to the two that are at Joann's, this has a much larger space um, on the plate in there and in height as well. So that's also a great thing about this particular printer is I think it's like a four by four kind of area that you can print within four inches by four inches. So cool. Um, so yeah. So really what you do is you take a file you put it into the um, software and it tells the machine what to do and how to print it. Is it bad? You said file. And I'm like, what are we going to do with the file? And I'm thinking like, like a file. Cause you, we've talked about files. My brain is not That's there. Really That's where I went. I was like, Oh, a file. Cause you keep talking about the different tools. And so I was like, what yeah. are you going to do with the file? No, not a file. I, am not, I cannot be the only one that thought that. I cannot be. <laughs> I mean, come on, people. <laughs> okay, so we take like a computer file. Yes. Like a program. Yes. And open it up in the computer. Yes. Okay, got it. Got it. <laughs> so what we're going to do, if everybody's okay with it, is I'm going to share my screen. 
I'm going to show you how it works in the software so you can get an idea of how simple and easy it is to be able to use this. And then we're actually going to print something out. It's going to take five minutes to print, but you'll get to see how it works. And we can kind of chat for those five minutes with what's going on. Awesome. So I know people have a lot of questions. They're asking in there during the five minutes, we'll go back and answer some of the questions. So let's keep moving forward. So if you have questions, I will be getting to it. I promise. Just make sure you ask in the chat area. All right, go ahead, my friend. It looks like you have to allow me to share my screen again. Oh, I have to do that again. Save it. Okay. All right. We tested this. It I know. All right. I just changed it. Okay. Um, so I want to go here and we're going to share that. Okay. Let me pull this. How did I get this down here? I see it. Okay. So this is inside the 3d software that you get with when you purchase the machine. Okay. And so you also get a select amount of files here that come with the machine that you can go ahead and play around with. They also have like an online store that you can purchase more. And then there are some things that you can do, which I'm still trying to figure out exactly how it works, that you can take like regular cut files that you might have for your um, Cameo and be able to turn it into a 3D printed option. But I'm still playing with it. I was having a couple issues as I worked on it. So I'm looking for more YouTube tutorials and things like that, but it is an option. Yay for okay. YouTube tutorials. Yes. So <laughs> what we're going to do first is I'm going to come over here and I need to load my filament. And so this is putting the filament into the machine. And sorry, I have to just stand up here and stick this in to the machine and you'll start to see it come down the tube. I'll open this up too. Um, I just placed it right down here into this tube by sticking it in. I don't think people can see that oh. because you're still sh screen sharing. Let me see if I do. So you can if, I, if I unmute myself, does it go to the, the here? I don't know. It's on delay, so I can't tell. Um, okay. Well, you can always stop the screen share. We can go back to it. Okay. If well, we to... don't. It's okay. Okay. It's heating up right now. So, okay. I think we're okay. All right. Except I can hear myself because we didn't put myself on mute over here. There we go. Here we go, guys. Day 12, and we're still working through this. Okay, so even this is if you can't screen share, I know always something new. Okay, so even if you can't see what's going on just yet, basically I just put the filament into the machine, which is the plastic um, piece that I showed you before, and it's heating up my print head so that it's going to be able to print. So while that's doing that, I can come back here and I can start working on my design. And I'm going to make another one of these anchors. So I just clicked on that one and it has this group of five here and I just double click and it puts it right here on my, sorry, it's loading the filament, it's heating it up and extruding some of it so that it's ready to go. Okay. So while that's doing that. Um, so right here is what you're going to do. And then you can use your little box here and you can see how it just sits right there on the work surface. And that's what it's gonna print. So you can see how high it is and the dimensions and everything else that you can play around with. And I really like this set, A, because it's free with the machine, but B, I love the beach. So this is perfect for me. And it also has these loops at the top of all of them so that they really are charms already. And I can just add my jump rings right to the top. Okay, so. All right, so it's, it's done so loading. It's done loading and now it's gonna wait for me to tell it what to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm gonna tell it to print here. And then I'm gonna take off the screen share so that you can see what's going on. Okay, so here, this gives you your preview. And like, look at how simple that is. All I did was put the file that was already there, like provided by Silhouette, 
Um, so you don't have to get really complicated. You don't have to make your own files. You can get what Silhouette already has and make some really great pieces. They have other options as well that you can shop. And when you buy your machine, they give you a $25 credit to go and buy things in their store as well. Okay, so this is all ready to go and I'm just going to hit print. And right here it tells you that it's gonna take five minutes and 45 seconds. Um, it also tells you, so you can have draft, high quality um, or the standard. The other ones, I'm not really sure what they are uh, because they're not in the manual. That <laughs> It must be if you're using some other special kind of filament or something. Um, but so we're just gonna keep it on standard. It tells you how long it's gonna take. Um, it tells me that I'm ready. And it's telling me that right now my um, print head is at 410 degrees Fahrenheit. So that thing is hot. So you do not want to touch your machine while it's working. And also when we're done printing, we do have to let it sit for a minute or two to cool down because the plastic is gonna be super hot. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to print. And I'm going to stop sharing. Cool. And I think you can see the machine now and how it's working. I leave the door open so that it doesn't get too hot inside of the machine. And this is your design platform. I gotta move my finger out of the way because it's going to test some of the filament before it starts. And there is a special sheet on here. It's like a sticker that you get with the kit or you can buy extra um, that you put on your print surface before you print it. So as you might be able to hear again, it's loading some more filament and heating it up so that it's ready to get started. Wow, that is so cool. So yeah, and it's just going to run through the file by itself. Like I literally don't have to do anything. Um, I mean, so when I did the cat box thing, I didn't sit here the whole time, but I did check on it like maybe every 10 or 15 minutes to make sure everything was just working properly. And you can see it just extruded some here and that's just like a test <laughs> for it. Extrude. And now it's, doing the outline and it looks like a piece of it got stuck. Yeah, I'm just gonna pull that out of the way because it doesn't need that. And so it's just gonna kind of keep going around and building up the layers of what it's doing. I'm and gonna make it so it's full screen. Okay. So I don't know if you want to do some questions while we're waiting. Because like I said, it's going to take five minutes for it to go ahead and print. I want to say yes, but I can't like have myself on oh, mute and got it. It. Okay. ask for questions. Um, sure. So, I mean, hopefully you guys let me know if this is not if you if you want to get a closer look. But uh, in order for us to ask the questions, I have to be off mute. And then that makes it so that it's all my, my face, as you can see, like it just went straight to my face as I'm scratching my eye. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go up and let's take a look at these questions here. And it says, mom bear one, I would love to get one. I would get, I would love to get a lot for the metal hammering stitch markers. So I'm guessing that's the kit. They she would like to have a kit. People were all commenting that yes, they want kits. Yes, they love these ideas. They they love that. So that's awesome. Okay. Um, let's see here. Hi everyone. Uh, and Melissa Spradley says I love it. Uh, Becky says cute earrings. Oh, Eileen Hall is here. Hi Eileen. Um, and Penny Hebert says, does it give off a plastic smell when it's heating up? It does not. It does not. Good. Uh, my mom is here. She says she's very excited. Um, Chris, Chris Lopez says she thought that it was the kind of file for a quick minute too. See, I wasn't the only one. I was like, <laughs> a file? What are we doing with a file? <laughs> I really was like, what is happening? Um, my daughter is commenting that we need to get one of these ASAP. So yeah, <laughs> um, so Eileen Hull says, is this like Illustrator? To me, it looks like an AutoCAD sort of thing. 
Yeah. I mean, I've never used Illustrator before, but it's definitely its own system. It's not using any other program or it's not using a program that you just have out there. It is a specific one from Silhouette to be able to work with this. But yeah, it's similar to doing like an AutoCAD, I would think more than Illustrator. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Like I definitely want one of these. Um, people are commenting that my daughter is going to bankrupt me by watching all of these events because she's like, mom, why don't we have that? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, so Ali says, does the time it take depend the time it takes to make something? Does it depend on the file size? Probably the object size too. Yeah. It's more the object size, how, um, the dimensions, how large the dimensions are, because that's going to determine how many layers have to be put down. And so something for like the box that I made that took me, I think it was like an hour and a half to do it. Um, but again, I mean, you're making a piece that's probably, I think it's like two inches total. Um, so it just takes a while for it to build up that much plastic Okay. while it's working. So Chris Lopez, hi, Chris. She says this technology is very science fiction, futuristic and mind blowing. Yeah, I completely agree. Jennifer Sanders says that she wants baby Yoda stitch markers. That would be cool as long as we are buying a template from Disney and it's not like a, a, a stolen trademark, but that would be really cool. Uh, Jackie Hunter says, I have told the family that they can't eat for the moment because I'm watching Marley. Awesome. Good job. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> That's great. Um, Chris Lopez says, okay, now I really want one of these machines. Uh, Kathy Blossom says, I wonder if the points on the anchor, the starfish, et cetera, could catch on the fabric. So I guess the question that, I mean, you could sand if there's anything rough. Is there yeah. anything rough? I mean, there's nothing. Like when I feel, I'm going to just throw this over here. Um, when I stepped, oh, there we go. When I feel this, there's nothing rough on here at all. Um, I mean, I guess these points could catch on something, but I mean, I had it on my knitting and I didn't have a problem with it. Um, Your phone again, it, it's just why. kind of how you take it on and off as opposed to anything else. Okay. Um, Chris Lopez says, I've never seen one of these, so I never got the printer concept. Um, it is way more like a manufacturing than a printer, um, just for my understanding. Chris, I am so with you on that. That's, I mean, it, it just confused me completely because I've never seen one in action. And I just assumed, like like I said, I really thought it was like like it, you put in like a block of plastic and it like chiseled away the, the bits, you know? Um, I didn't realize it was literally like creating layers and laying them on top of each other. Um, pretty amazing. Let's see. Everybody loves the cat box. <laughs> Melissa caught that. So <laughs> I was laughing when you said extruded <laughs> because I was like, there's a word that literally has never been said on the Yarn Tank podcast. Well, there's a first time for everything, guys. I was, I was like, extrude. <laughs> that's so funny. That's that's funny. Melissa's my people. <laughs> Melissa's my people. She just had a birthday. Happy belated birthday, Melissa. Happy birthday. Um, so my my daughter is in here. So that's super cool. And then it says, has anyone mentioned the price of the 3D printer? So Jen, uh, this is Jennifer. Do you want to talk about that again? Sure. So this particular model, this is just the regular Alta. And when I looked online last night, um, I think it was on the Silhouette website. I don't know. I linked it in the blog post, which is up now. Um, it was $199 for this one. You can get the updated model for, I think, $399. Um, but I was finding a hard time. I was having a hard time finding the big differences between it. So if you're debating between the two models, I would contact Silhouette directly and maybe ask them um, because the features that they list like on the website are pretty much exactly the same. So I just wasn't exactly sure as to what really got updated in the Alta Plus or Alta Plus. Um, but this is just the regular model and this one currently is $199. Awesome. But you also get $25 um, to apply to the store to be able to buy more files. You also get free files. Um, you get the white filament with it, which I've made now four stitch markers and the cat box. And I still have a ton left 
So you really do get a good supply of it. You also get some of the papers that go on here. So like you don't need, if you buy the machine, you get everything you need to get started as long as you're okay with white filament to get started. Awesome. So that kind of leads me to my next question. Um, you did say there are other colors. Can you more use more than one color in a process? So, so from what I understand, I haven't done it yet. I'm trying to play it safe. Right. But from what I understand, you run it through with one color and then you add your second color and the file has to be a dual color file so that it knows when to stop and start and add okay. new layers to it to get your color changes. Awesome. That makes sense. So I could see that it's done, but I'm going to let you let it cool here for a second before you touch yes. it. Um, Tracy would like to know how small can it print? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I haven't tried to go really small. Um, I mean, you have the ability when you're in here, let me see if it's and while you're looking at that Tracy also says this is going to be on her Christmas list for sure which is <laughs> a really great idea people if you let people know now they could start saving just a little bit each month before Christmas and it's that'll be perfect um people are also saying that they're going to miss our daily visits like this I we'll feel have like we have to do something to finish off the rest of the week I feel like we just can't leave them hanging on a Tuesday that just oh boy doesn't, it doesn't fit I mean, we got it. We got to do more. We got to do more. We got to figure it out. I got to find out first if I'm teaching the Michaels class on Thursday, because I don't know if Tamara's going to take that over since I took her Saturday class. But did you find out? No, I'm trying to. I had. Oh, wait, there it is. Hold on. Give me one second here. So, Eileen, yes, this is a silhouette product. Mm hmm. Okay, it so it looks product. like I can get the anchor down to a quarter of an inch. Okay. Um, and that is wide and it's about a half an inch tall. Um, but again, I don't know what quality that's going to print out as I've never printed that small before. I've just kind of been printing with the default of what the files yeah. are giving me. Cool. Um, Deb is saying that this is really cool and she really needs to find a home for it. <laughs> um, people are telling me this is a business write off. Yes, guys, uh, use it to make knitting needles you know what? I don't know. I'm going to let the people who make knitting needles stick to their, to their art. Cause there's yeah. some really great knitting needles out there. And, well, I, and also I like you're them. not going to be able to make a full needle in one print. So you'd be making multiple prints and then having to like glue them together. Mm -hmm. So that kind of eats mm -hmm. away at the integrity of the knitting needle that you would be using. So this is a really good question from Alora Bird, and she would like to know what kind of files do they have? Meaning, um, are there like some branded files? Did they do some where like maybe there's some Disney ones, there's some Pixar ones, or are they all just, I wanna say like generic silhouette files, or you know, could you get files from other places and bring them in? Like how, do, how could that work? Yeah, they're generic files, but like I said, you can get cut files that you can then turn into um, 3D printing files if you have the silhouette um, software, which you don't have to have like a silhouette cutting machine to be able to have the silhouette software. You can just download it and then you can purchase um, the character files and whatnot that different people have available. And then you would be able to turn it into your own file to print. Awesome. Darling Corbett would like to know, isn't that super hot? You are putting your fingers on it. Not anymore. It's cool now. Okay. Um, I can touch it. It's not hot at all. I mean, when it first came out, I didn't want to touch it. But if you let it sit for like two minutes or so, it really does cool down fairly quickly, um, especially like this is a pretty thin project. So it cools quickly. But you can always just like touch it a little bit. And if it's still too hot, like when I did this one, this stayed a little bit warmer, longer, but it's also a bigger piece, a little bit thicker. Um, but if you just give it a couple minutes, it cools down. Like this is completely cool to the touch. No problem. Fantastic. And this will lead me to the next question uh, from Kathy. She says, um, how smooth are the various objects? Her son uh, did a 3D printer object in his class and some of the items need to be buffed to make smooth edges. So that's where I'm going to lead it to this. How smooth is that really? Yeah. So this one isn't too bad, but it's also a smaller object. Um, definitely from what I've seen, the larger the object is, um, the more like traditional 3D type of shape. It definitely has some 
rough Rough. edges that you would need to go back and sand and kind of buff out. But that's just kind of the nature of what this is. I mean, it's literally laying layers of plastic on top of each other um, as opposed to like a toy or something that you have a mold that you're Mm -hmm. putting your plastic in and kind of letting it fill the mold type of thing. Jennifer Sanders says that she is an architectural drafter and her family needs to get her one of these. Absolutely, guys. Make sure you go to the blog post and get that link. Let them know that we sent you. It's really, it's very important. They know that we sent you, you guys. So please make sure you click the link to Silhouette so that they know um, that you heard about it here. Uh, So here's a question. It says, 3D printers, what do you do in a power cut? So my guess is like a power outage? What do you do in a power cut? I don't know what that means. Um, I'm not sure what that means, but I will tell you, sorry guys, this piece came off, so I'm just gonna take it off. It's just the outside, but um, this machine specifically, you need to have it plugged into an outlet source at all times, and you also have to have it plugged into your computer. It is not a Bluetooth capable um, printer, and neither is the next version up. It's still not a Bluetooth. device so you do have to have it plugged into your computer while you're printing it is one of the downfalls because you know then you're attached to sitting next to your printer if you care um but yeah you have to have the power source always and plugged into your computer all right so aj has a couple things here um she says i used clear glow-in-the-dark filament and the items i used were a pyramid and she says you can create your own files with the app so you could actually create you could create something um and uh is she using silhouette though let's see here um aj says sanders or he yeah i'm not sure if it's a he or she it was around a hundred dollars with the new one and around three hundred dollars so i don't I don't know. I'm trying. I must have missed a question somewhere. I'm not sure. Uh, so AJ, if you're there, let me know if you used um, a silhouette or a different one. Um, Eileen Hall says, this is very interesting. I always wondered how these printer, printers worked. Me too. Um, Jennifer Sanders says, I'm going to cut spokes off of a baseball, a ba- bicycle wheel and grind the ends to make long DPNs. <laughs> That's unique. That I mean, why not? Um, Keep going. This is really cool. I saw there's someone's son printed some crochet hooks and they looked really neat. All right. So that's, that's all the questions we've caught up on the questions as far as I can tell. Um, So go ahead and take it, take it away. Yeah. So I just took the the base right out of the machine. It's just an acrylic plate. Um, And then what you're going to do is you need to peel this off. And it can be really tricky. I don't know how well this one's going to stick. We'll see. Um, But sometimes they're really hard to get off. They do give you like a spatula to try to get it off as well if you need it. And just be like careful with it. And sometimes they just pop right off. It depends. You have to like get it just right under there and then they fly off. And like with the cat, with my cat dish here, like I had the, ha- the hardest time getting this thing off. I don't know if it's because it was so large or what, but I could I'm not so get this off. I'm so impressed you didn't curse. I would have been like, ah. Oh. <laughs> and so there it is. And you'll see that there's a, some little bits maybe of the filament that come off, which you can just kind of pick off with your fingers. Um, and then I just added my jump ring right there to the top. And I had this really cool stitch marker. That is so, so neat s- and unique and different. So is it already like cool to the touch, the machine itself? Um, yes. I'm not going to go ahead and touch the print head just because I... Yeah, don't and, do that. I mean, hold on. I can look here. It says right now that it's 97 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. So it does tell you what it is, um, but it's also not going to cool down too much because if I want to print again or remove my filament, it has to heat up again anyway. So it tries to keep it at some kind of warm temperature so that it can easily do it again if I need it to. Awesome, yarn it out. This was, you said it was $199? Yes. 199 and AJ is a boy. So thank you AJ for letting us know. Sometimes you can't tell with the names. Like I'm like, I don't know, so they. But AJ, were you using the silhouette when you were creating your own? 
um, items. And how cool is it that you're creating your own items? That's so neat. Uh, my daughter says, this is, in she says, this is awesome. We've got to get one of these. Um, Eileen Hull says that is adorable and would be a great journal charm too. Mm -hmm. Very good. Good. Yeah, and they do have a flat surface on the back, or at least these do that you could theoretically put glue on the back of it and glue it onto a notebook, a journal, a cup, something. I mean, if you do put it on a cup or something like that, you can't wash it. Like, yeah, that yeah, just yeah. doesn't work. But you, I mean, I use this little container with my stitch markers that I could glue this onto the top. Like if I did a different color, um, that it would look really cute too. Um, so crafty chat cafe, are you able to reuse the spent or used plastic? No. Okay. I mean, I guess if you had a way to melt it down to do something, but you cannot reuse it in the machine. And like, this is what it extruded in the beginning to test out the print head and make sure it was hot enough. So there is some waste to it. Um, but I mean, I can't, there's nothing I can really do with this. Right. Okay. Um, can you paint the charm? You said earlier, you talked about acrylic paint. I wonder if there was a way to paint it with acrylic and then do some sort of, I want to call it varnish or whatever, but you know, right. some sort of shine on it. Yeah, I don't know. You'd have to put some kind of sealer on it or it's going to wear off as you use it. Um, but like I said, you can get colored filament. So you would be able to make these really any color. I mean, they literally have every color of the rainbow plus shades and everything else. That's cool. AJ says that he used the silhouette to design his own pieces so well yeah, maybe you should good. email us and let us know maybe aj should be on the zoom call and like yeah. be like hey ladies how we do it <laughs> yeah. i'm a, a real novice at this so any tips you want to send our way <laughs> that would be fit caitlin at marleybird.com <laughs> that's what that is um okay crafty ferret mama if you have to do any filling can you use an Filing, I'm sorry, I can read. Filing, can you use a nail file for the small and or shape corners? Um, corners. That's a good question. And the only reason I say that is because, I mean, I have used uh, sandpaper on it, but that obviously has a, uh, a stronger grit than what a nail file would be. So I'm gonna say it depends on what you're trying to file. Um, cool. if it's something that you got like a large mistake on or a large area. Um, like, okay, so for the top of my box, I had a little bit of trouble on the one side. I can't remember which one it was to get it to fit on the box. So I actually used one of my um, files that I had from soldering class that we talked about. And I used that inside of here to sand that out. Um, but again, it you'll file it away. It just might take you longer if you're not using a strong enough grit on it. Love it. AJ says that he only did it once with his friend. So he's a novice too. And then Kathy called him the, the minion maker and teacher. <laughs> so that's really awesome. Uh, all right. So those are all the questions. Everybody is very interested in that. You just did something like it's really, it's, I almost want to do another one. Like I'm like, can you do another one? So somebody did ask, can you reuse the paper that was on the table. Yeah, so you can reuse it. Um, I can tell mine starting to like lose its stickiness, so to speak. It's not sticky. Like it's almost like painter's tape on top of here, which a lot of people have said in different forums that they use like the blue painter's tape for their platform instead of buying more. Um, people also say that they put uh, glue sticks on them to be able to reuse the sheets longer and have the plastic still stick to it. So again, I'm still fairly new and trying to figure out all of these tips and tricks, but that's what some of the other people are doing to get even more longevity out of their um, platform coverings to reuse it. But I've used this platform covering three times now and it's still working just fine. Yeah, this is so neat. Um, Kay Beaver? Ever. Uh, so stitch markers have been so fun. I like hanging out with you and your friends every day. Oh, thank you. Um, I have enjoyed this. Jennifer Sanders saying, I'm really enjoyed this. I'm looking forward to more meetings, whether it's with stitch markers or something else. I, I really like this. Um, I really like the idea of you coming on and doing more jewelry stuff and, and having more jewelry stuff here on the channel. Um, I mean, we always default to Jill Wiseman when it comes to, to beaded jewelry that she does because she's amazing at it. 
I never would want to take away anything from her, but I know that you have all sorts of other things that you do. And I love the idea of you coming on even like once a week, just as like, Hey, let's learn something new, you know, and maybe, maybe that's an option we can talk about in the future. You know, who, who knows, but you, you have a lot of, how do I say this? You remind me a lot of Tamara in the sense that you dabble in a lot of different crafts. I'm like, all crochet, all knitting all the time, right? Like this is where I am. I'm, you know, like this, right? And I do the stitch marker stuff, but I don't really do that whole, a whole bunch outside of this. Cause I mean, it's 24 seven is what I do. So right. I love the idea of having you in here to learn something new. Cause it's, it's, it's rejuvenating. You know, I really like that. And everybody does, they like it so much. They love the idea of working with beads and wire. Um, I think, I think it would be fun, you know? Yeah. I don't know. What, what could we do? I enjoy doing it. Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could work on something like that. I mean, let people, would you, would you be interested in something like that? Jewelry classes with Caitlin? I mean, I think it would be neat. Uh, just even something fun. Maybe it's like even just once a month where you could put together a kit and say, here's your kit. This is what we're going to be doing on X Saturday or whatever, not a Saturday, not a Saturday, but you know what I mean? Whatever day of the week it is. And you'd be like, all right, let's learn. And I mean, I think that'd be fun. Mm -hmm. All right. I like it. We could figure that out, but this was cool. This was super neat. Um, I could see a lot of different things getting made with this. I, I would love to see more files, like more than just like the, what comes with it. I'd love to see what my other options are. Um, so I might have to check that stuff out, but people are loving this. They think this is great. They love the idea of you being here. Um, they love your smile. <laughs> and um, yeah, so thank you so much for yeah, doing And I just want to say, if you do want to check out the files, you can go to silhouetteamerica.com. I think it is, it's in the blog post, um, but that is their, does, you can get to their design store there. And if you look at the 3D files, you'll see what's for purchase in 3D files there as well that you can check into it. And if you search on YouTube, you can also see again, how to take your cut file and turn it into a 3D file. So you would have multiple options based off of what's available. There's obviously a lot more cut files. Those machines have been around a very long time. Um, so there's just more material for it. This is so neat. I love this. Thank you so much. I know that putting together the 12 days of stitch marker, the DIY stitch marker event, make along, whatever. Uh, I mean, I know it's, I know it was a lot of work for you. I know it was, and we really appreciate it. We've all learned so much stuff. I now have a huge list from my daughter, especially of the items to go get. Um, and I've already started buying things you know Christmas is coming I know Christmas is coming I've got so much stuff happening actually I am working on an ebook that I'm going to put out for purchase for Christmas or not just Christmas but holidays like 30 30 days of quickies um and I think that we should include some stitch markery kind of things in there I think that would be good but sure. um yeah, this is so this is so great everybody really did have a great time they're saying thank you very much and they would love to do this again Perfect. Awesome. They definitely, they want to do wire wrapped beads and like stones and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that would be cool. I think that would be cool. All right. That's it from us, everybody. Um, we will let you know about the rescheduled podcast as soon as we find out more. Um, and that should be good too. That's also a silhouette uh, event. So that should be a lot of no, fun. Sizzix. Sizzix. I, I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> we'll start with S's. Sizzix. So that would be a lot of fun to, to hang out and do that stuff. So it'll be cool. All right, my friend, that's it. I will talk to you later on. Bye. Bye guys. <laughs>